Hi there, I'm Rod Horton from Graphic Man Science. I've had a few people approach me and ask me to teach them to do hand-painted signs. I'll put this wee video together just to give you the basics, especially for the people just starting out, uh, and the lowdown of what you need to do proper signs. Unfortunately, while I'm not a rule follower, there are a few rules about sign writing that if you put these in place now, you'll find that your sign writing goes so much easier and so much better in the future. Okay, so you're going to need practice, unfortunately, it's like learning any hand skill. You've got to put a lot of practice in. You've got to get that muscle memory in your hands, just like playing an instrument, and that involves a hell of a lot of practice. So what we're going to do is teach you the best basics today, how to do the uh, basic letter forms, and then uh, we'll move on in the next video and show you how to do some lettering and layout and get things looking like a professional's done it. Righto. First thing you're going to need, and I encourage, is a mall stick. A lot of people starting out, and I was one of them, said, oh, mall stick, um, I can't do it, I can't do it, it's all too hard. Uh, get one, It's uh, this one's aluminium aircraft tubing with a uh, fizzy wine cork on it. You can use a bit of doweling, wrap a bit of rag around it, uh, anything you like. It's just a, a relatively stiff pole, uh, and it's there to support your hand, to make things a bit steadier and to keep your finger out of the paint and your hand out of the paint which uh, is a critical thing of course. I also need a ruler. Everyone needs a ruler, nice straight ruler. And I find a spirit level invaluable. When you're starting out you don't have a natural eye for finding out what's level and what's vertical and you tend to have things slightly off and of course People look at signs, they look at them, and they can see when things are slightly off. Okay, so these are the few things you need. Of course, a handful of pencils. You will need some paint. Uh, nowadays, we use predominantly water-based paint, and one of the biggest problems people starting out is the consistency of their paint. You want it about the consistency of cream, and as a learner, slightly thin, is better than slightly thick, but you'll learn this as you go along. Uh, what we don't want is the brush to drag and uh, cause problems. So that paint, water-based paint, and of course we've got brushes. Now, brushes are, oh, we could make an hour video on brushes. These are predominantly sable hair brushes, a few badger hair and squirrel hair ones in there, but they are all manufactured for sign writing. They're very, very expensive, but all of these are 20 to 30 years old. Look after them, clean them, and they will last you literally a lifetime. And this is a good sable hair brush. This is one I'm going to use today. As you can see, the uh, it's all nicely formed already on the end, and they're packed away like that. In the old days when we used turps and spirit-based paint, we dipped them in motor oil, and then we had to wash them out in turps. Nowadays, predominantly we're using water-based paint, we just use normal dishwashing liquid or any soap to keep their shape. Uh, and then it's just a simple matter of dip them in a bucket of water, slosh it around, get your brush just in your hands, like that, get all the water out, and then reform the shape of the brush. Okay, and we're all ready to go. The other thing I suggest you do is uh, take the no circulars and junk mail sign off your letterbox and get the junk mail delivered again because these are good, they're throw away, rip the page off, throw it away. Old telephone book does the same thing, but this allows us to pallet out our brush and get the right shape for painting. So we've got everything. Of course we need some paper on the wall. I've got some flash stuff here. This is called easel paper, uh, used for business conferences and things like that. It's relatively freely available. This one's got a sticky top on it, so it's, they're, they're quite expensive, but I came across this um, free. Uh, you can use anything A3 paper will do. Uh, just tack it onto a wall. I prefer to walk on, work on a flat wall like this, and away we go. So what we're going to do now is uh, set up our paper, get our spirit level, just draw a couple of vertical lines, uh, sorry, horizontal lines. And we're just going to go through the basic stroke shapes and that. Unfortunately, as I said, 
we've just got to learn this boring stuff that will get the muscle memory going and we'll then be uh, able to do a whole pile of other lettering.